BC Kuali. I'm going to show you the foam system on engines 1153 and 1133, and also the inline foam adductor and some basics about uh, pumping foam. Okay, so here we are. This is 1153. This is set up the exact same way as 1133. This engine has an inline around the pump for, uh, foam proportioner, and uh, what it does is it'll draw the foam directly into the engine. It's different than every other engine in our city. The other engines just have a uh, Class A foam system that's on board. This also has a Class A foam system, but with this type of system, we can draft uh, Class B foam more efficiently and easier. So just to talk a little bit about our foam that we use, we have a different type of foam here. We use uh, Universal Gold and it's a 1 in 3 percent foam concentrate. So it's a 1 percent for uh, hydrocarbons and 3 percent for polar solvents as opposed to regular AFFF foam which is 3 and 6 percent. So in essence, this is three times the volume that you would get with a normal foam bucket. So that's one of the differences here in Menor. And we also have Class A foam. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, you never want to mix Class A and Class B foam together. That'll cause a problem uh, where it'll solidify inside the tank and mess up your pump and could cause some problems. So that being said, we'll start off here with the foam system itself. So once the system of the engine, uh, the battery's turned on, you can just uh, turn on the system right here and it automatically defaults first to uh, drafting of class, class A. So class A foam immediately sets up at 0.5%. That's the percentage that that type of foam works at. The mode button is how you switch between the different types of operations for the foam system and I'll just cycle through them real quick. So we have uh, Class A foam, and that will come directly out of the tank that's on top of the engine. We have drafting Class A. Drafting Class A would be utilized if we had a big bucket of Class A for a particular type of operation where we need loads of it, more than we would carry. Drafting Class B. This is how we would uh, pump for a flammable liquid fire, polar solvent, or uh, fuels. Prime mode, this is a way to get uh, the fluid from the bucket into the pump itself a little faster. The flush mode, anytime you switch between operations of class A to class B or switch in, in any operation back and forth, it'll automatically flush it so we don't have a problem where we mix different products like I mentioned before. Tank fill A, um, this is to actually fill the tank that's on board. Um, another operation has to go with that real quick. Be on here. If you're going to use this to fill the tank, this switch has to be uh, rotated 90 degrees and that'll direct the plumbing into the tank. So if you select the, the uh, tank A fill, you have to open this door and switch the valve so that it goes into the, uh, the tank itself and not into, into the plumbing of the pump. Next one on our list here goes back. So we have 0.5% for uh, Class A. So now, let's just say we want to select this, we would hit enter, and it would warn us, you have to flow water, right? So now once we're flowing water, Class A foam will come out. These, area, these arrows here, we can go up or down and increase our percentage. Um, draft Class A, same deal, hit enter, it's gonna tell you you need to be flowing water. So now draft Class B, you'll see what it automatically defaults to is 3%. That comes from the actual setup of the engine itself. The original uh, setup was for uh, hydrocarbons at 3%. If you recall, we have 1 and 3% foam, so therefore we have to adjust it downward. Once we start flowing, it'll give us the option. One of the things about it is uh, as we start to flow this foam, we can increase this percentage-wise once we start flowing to get the foam out faster, and then once we get it out the end of the nozzle, we can dial it back down. So uh, just remember that should be flowing at 1% for hydrocarbons and 3% for polar solvents. 
and then prime like I said just like before and flush it will automatically do it or you could do it manually and then the fill like I said and uh, that's the whole thing otherwise it just sits in the manual mode <laughs> one of the things that's good about this system is you're not really uh, required to have any sort of distance or pressure for it so because it injects directly into the water stream through the pump um, you don't you're not set to any sort of pressure requirement like the inline adapter the only thing you have to do is make sure you utilize one of these one of these four so you have them and they also have an indicator that says foam so one of these four will give you foam that's these three packs up here and also the front bumper line beyond that everything else uh, doesn't have the capability to do it all right so that's basically how this works the operation itself is rather simple this is the pickup tube for this particular engine we hook it up to this All right, if you're flowing foam with engines other than 1153 or 1133, you have to use the inline adductors. That's what this is sitting on the ground here. This right here works off a of venturi principle. Water is forced across, creates a negative pressure, and then that negative pressure allows normal atmospheric pressure to push the foam up into the adductor. You set the percentage of what you want with this dial down here, one, three, six, whatever you'd like to flow. And uh, this comes from your engine, and then it goes out to your line. You need to have 200 PSI at this adductor to get it to pull. It'll pull up at a lower percentage, or lower pressure, but in order to get the accurate percentage that is on this dial, it has to be 200 pounds at this adductor. Um, another problem or limitation with this is you can only go so far beyond this adductor. So with this particular adductor, it's 150 feet. So if you're using more than three lengths of inch and three quarter beyond this adductor, you'll still get foam, but it won't be at the proper percentage. So in other words, this thing can give you a lot of false positives. It'll, it'll pull up foam at a lower percentage or a lower pressure than 200 pounds and it'll uh, flow foam further than 150 feet past the adductor but in both of those scenarios it'll flow the wrong percentage of foam so it might not be doing as efficient a job as you might want it to so that being said you got to follow those parameters and make sure that you're doing it the right way one of the things with this I used to have a strainer screen on these pickup tubes but we found with the Universal gold foam it was far too Far too thick and viscous to get through it. So a lot of them were removed So for the most part how this is done is guys will take this and put it directly onto here and Then just run their pickup tubes through buckets right here at the pump panel But then you're limited severely with how far you can go if you need to pump farther away Then naturally you need to run a supply line out farther get to this point 
and then run your foam with 150 feet beyond that. Some of the limitations with that is you have to be pretty spot on with your pump hydraulics because if you don't get the 200 here, you're not flowing the right amount of uh, foam concentrate and making the right percentage. Another thing is you have to have a nozzle. The gallonage has to match the nozzle itself or the adductor. So this adductor is set to 95 GPM is what it comes from the factory. This particular foam nozzle is also set to 95 GPM. You can use an adjustable gallonage nozzle to create foam just as well as using the foam nozzle. You just have to set the gallonage on that adjustable rate nozzle to 95 to match the adductor or you won't get the proper foam. So that's why we just default to this. This particular nozzle hooks up to your line just like normal. Has the bail to turn it off and on, and then it has a mechanical agitator that you can rotate in and out to change to see uh, if it makes a better blanket one way or the other. It also has a way to pull air inside of it, inside of the foam concentrate. So foam needs three things. It needs uh, the foam concentrate, air, and uh, mechanical agitation to make a finished foam. So that's that.